Hello and welcome back to my channel. This week I'm going to show you how I made my Sarah Sanderson costume. Last week I showed you how to make my Mary costume. If you missed that episode and want to go back to it, I will leave a link in the description box below. Plus I will have it in the iCard above. The first thing I started with was the skirt. It is pretty simple and self-explanatory. I did purchase a couple yards of a purple fabric, this yellow fabric, and they are all cotton. I first measure it to see how long it is since I am fairly tall. I need a fairly long skirt. And then I lay the purple material down and then I lay the yellowish beige material on top of it. That will be the main part of the skirt. And since this skirt has two long slits up the sides, I want a little bit more modesty, um, so I took this mesh material and put at the sides where the openings are. And then I sew the skirt, the purple and the yellow color, together about 16 inches down. I did remove the mesh material before I sewed this down because I will be adding it to the waist later. Now I'm taking that mesh material and I will be sewing it to the top of the fabric. And I make sure I sew this on the inside of the skirt. And I do overlap the yellow and the purple with this mesh material. Now for the apron part of the skirt. It is a red material that I went ahead and I put a gathering stitch in the top and I gathered it down. And then I went ahead and I attached it to the top of the skirt. And the reason why I gathered this piece down before I attached it to the yellow of the skirt is because once I add the elastic waistbanded skirt, this will actually, I want it smaller than the actual yellow part. Once those pieces are all combined, I go ahead and I fold over the top edge about two inches to make a channel for the elastic, and I sew that down. One thing I did not show is I did add a, another piece, a strip of purple to the top of the skirt to give that little poof that Sarah has. Now on to the bodice or the corset. I did use Butterick Pattern B5935 as a base for this, however since most commercial corset patterns don't fit me, I did have to lengthen it a bit, plus add a little bit more fabric in the bust area. I did use a combination for the pattern A and C because I wanted the front closure, but then I also wanted the wider straps. And when I made the mock-up I did change where the boning channels are on the front because I wanted more of a V shape. And this corset is three layers. It has a brown lining layer. It has a layer of canvas. It also has a satiny fashion material on the outside. So here I'm just cutting out all three sets of the corset. With the satiny material, I did cut it a little bit longer because my plan was to fold it on the inside, um, but that does change later.
And once those three sets are cut out, I go ahead and pin them all together and sew up all those seams. And doing this three times took a while. And once the canvas layer was done, I go ahead and I trim all those seam allowances down and then I add in bias tape for boning channels.
once the boning channels are in, I go ahead and add the bones to each channel and then I sew the top of it so that they're secure inside. And then I connect the canvas material to the lining fabric with the bones curved towards the body. And then I attach the fashion fabric to the canvas and lining materials and then I go ahead and flip it where the right sides are out on the lining material and the fashion fabric. And I do attach it on the top and the bottom and leave the sides open so I can flip it. And because the satiny material on the outside is very slippery, I do give it a top stitch on the top and bottom of the corset. Once it's flipped around, I go ahead and fold the side edges in and then top stitch those down as well. And for the ties to this, I do add a ribbon to each side on the inside of the corset. And I use some satin cording that um, keeps it closed. And with the straps on the corset, I did use metal grommets and a tie. For the sleeves, I wanted more of a lightweight mesh material. So I went and bought some cheesecloth and I dyed it this purpley pinkish color. I folded it in half and sewed it up to about my arm size and then I attached it to the straps on the corset and I just hand tacked it. And if you've ever worked with cheesecloth before, it's really delicate, but I don't care if it rips or looks raggedy because that's part of the costume. Now the weathering. I went ahead and I mixed some brown, black, and a lot of water to my acrylic paint with some fabric medium and I brushed and sponged it all over the corset. For the hair, I'm not a natural blonde nor do I have this long of hair so I have to use a wig. And I cannot remember where I got this wig but it's a very very long blonde wig 
that I brushed out and then I went ahead and did loose ringlets on it to kind of give it a wave and then I used the steamer to steam the entire hair. I added a grocery bag to it, made sure the steamer was inside there and really heated up and got saturated and let it dry overnight. And here's the finished costume. The hair, I'm leaving it in the little ringlets right now until it gets closer to Halloween. And then after that, I will let them go. And that's pretty much it for the hair. I think the overall costume looks pretty good. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. And next week, I will show you how I made my daughter's Winifred costume. See you next time.